Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode number 255 of Ask Dave. Now that we're all stuck at home all around the world, I'm trying to do a daily video just to bring a little ham radio into our lives, encourage us to get on the air, not fall into a rut of doing nothing, but using the time at home practically. For example, if you've ever wanted to learn Morse code, maybe this is a good time to give it a try. Or QRP, or just sideband, or FT8, or something that you can do while you're at home with your ham radio gear. You can't get the virus through the radio, so might as well use it. Today, we're going to do an unboxing. The unboxing is going to be of this radio right here, and this is the Anytone D. 578 UV uh, and I believe it's called a 3 Pro and this is a very interesting radio because it not only works on uh, 2 meters and on 70 centimeters but also on 1.25 meters which is 222 to 225 a very much neglected handband so we're going to do the unboxing today okay and then as the days go on we'll do a little bit more now this is not a reference station video. This is a candidate as a reference station mobile. However, this is a little on the expensive side, so we might look at uh, other possibilities. I will do a survey video where we look at a whole bunch of different mobile radios and kind of try and derive some requirements of what we're looking for in a good mobile radio for the technician class um, reference station. Now I'm going to stick with the same power supply, the Samlex SEC1235M. Uh, as I pointed out yesterday, it's available from Taboa Energy for quite a low price compared to what it costs through the traditional outlets. And uh, this radio, uh, or this power supply, once you get it, is going to uh, enable you to power both the technician part and the general part of our reference station. So let's dive in to the unboxing. This is the Anytone DMR Digital Mobile Radio and the model is the ATD578UV3 Pro and the frequency ranges it transmits on are three amateur radio bands. There is the 2 meter band the uh, 70 centimeter band and down at the bottom the 1.25 meter band uh, it'll put out 50 watts on 2 meters uh, 40 watts on 70 centimeters but only 5 watts on 222 uh, megahertz which is 1.25 meters it takes up to 15 amps now um, as far as the power supply would be concerned uh, the Samlex that we bought uh, for the uh, standard reference station power supply would work just fine. Uh, you wouldn't normally use this the same time you're using your HF radio, but you might. And the Samlex can handle this in transmit while the radio is in receive, or the radio in transmit while this radio is in receive. Okay, so let's open it up and see what we've got in here it's kind of a heavy box it weighs a little over four pounds about four pounds two ounces so it's definitely not a handheld radio inside of here we have um, a uh, tells you what firmware we're on 1.06 and uh, there is a instructions to go to the support uh, download the CPS, that's the uh, consumer, not consumer. Uh, anyway, it's the programming software for the radio. And we set up an account on Bridgecom University so you can follow the step-by-step -step guide. This page also has, and I'll block out the number here because they've asked me to, um, a free course that they normally charge $97 for. Uh, that walks you through all the different features of the radio and that is free to you as uh, someone who has purchased the radio from them. Uh, the reason I recommend buying these Anytone 
DMR radios from Bridgecom Systems is that they do provide extensive support. Here's a little Bluetooth user guide. It has Bluetooth in it. The Bluetooth can be used if you want to talk through the vehicle's entertainment system or if you have a Bluetooth headset and you're using it at home you can do that too. And it's got all the radios in there and the Bluetooth menu and everything like that. There's also a little Bluetooth push to talk button that you can attach to the steering wheel. Uh, here is the operating manual. It's not terribly thick. I've glanced through it. It looks like it's written well in uh, uh, good English. Okay, step-by-step -step installation, everything. And that's the shipping label right there. Two Anytone stickers. Boy, I tell you, you can't buy anything these days without stickers. So, now, here's the radio itself. This is the mobile um, mounting clamp. Let's take this out of the bag so we can see it. It's designed for a million different ways to mount the thing. And uh, one of the nice things is that you can put the screws in on the sides and then slide one up here and then slide it into here, pick where you want and then tighten them. That's a lot better than uh, a lot of the Japanese mounting uh, plates that I've seen where you have to get down underneath and thread the uh, nuts in after you're trying to hold the radio in this thing here. Here's the radio itself and it's got a pigtail on it for speaker. Very interesting placement of that fan. You can see that it blows air across some of the uh, right in here. It doesn't blow air across these out here. This is a 50 watt radio. Here's a PL259 connector, okay, and um, a pigtail uh, with a single fuse uh, in the hot lead there. Now uh, this um, is a USB connection for programming, okay. They give you the programming cable and it does not appear that the front comes off or is remotable and the microphone will mount right there. There are two volume control buttons uh, for the upper and the lower channel. Okay, There's an on off button right there a light which I suspect is green on receive and red on transmit. There's a GPS, that's just a label right there. By the way, if we look on the back, there is a little SMA connector right there, and that's where the GPS antenna is going to connect. Okay, and so on the front we have P1 through P6. We have a button here that's menu, and a little exit button down there. So we'll find out how we will use those uh, buttons as we go. Okay, now if we take this out, just to make sure there's a little hollow space here in that box, there's nothing in it. Okay, here is the microphone. Talk about a complex looking microphone. Looks like you can do a lot of stuff on the microphone. This is a hefty microphone. I have big hands and this fills my hands. We've got um, push to talk, uh, sub push to talk for A versus B. Um, Another little A and B up there. Down and up buttons right there. We've got um, A, B, C, D. This looks like the front of a DMR radio, actually. And that plugs in with this uh, RJ45 connector. And there's a little thing that can go over it to kind of sort of semi-waterproof it when you connect it in. This right here 
is the GPS receiver and it's a mag mount. We'll, we'll see if it's a mag mount. No, it's not a mag mount. There is a little sticky thing here. You can put that somewhere up by the dash in a corner or up somewhere where it can see uh, GPS. If you're going to mount this uh, mobile, uh, you've got a fairly lengthy cable here uh, to run this up uh, to the windshield. You can stick this on the inside of the windshield, maybe up behind the uh, rear view mirror, unless your car uses that area for sensors, uh, and then run this down to the GPS. Here in my shack, I would put it over by the window. Um, this little uh, unit right here is a GPS receiver for my little QRP Labs clock. Okay, so we got that. Here is the programming cable. And, oh no, I take it back. This is the charging cable. Uh, it's a duplicate. They do that. And that's how I know this is the charging cable for the little push to talk button, which we see right here. Um, a little dirty on that side. It's got a little place right here. Um, the, um, pushing it in and it's trying to connect and you charge it right in through there. Hopefully that will stop. This little piece of Velcro strap is for um, a little piece of Velcro strap is to hold the uh, push to talk button in place which I think is going to yeah okay this is the power cable. There are two more fuses. These fuses are down near the connector end for the cable. Okay. Now I'm going to put um, Anderson power pole connectors on those. Because my entire station is based on Anderson Power Pole. Anderson Power Pole connectors will be the reference station uh, power connector. No, this again, again, this is not the reference station radio for UHF, VHF. It's a candidate, but it's pretty expensive radio. It's like uh, $400, uh, so it's an expensive radio. Uh, we're we're going to do a survey of the uh, mobile market. Generally, uh, FM home station radios are mobile radios just mounted in the home station. Uh, but that that will carry the necessary power. Okay, now this also could go into a power supply just like the Samlex, just as is. But we're also connecting an HF station to that too, so we need a little power distribution system. Okay, in here, this is the little uh, mic. It's mounted like this and the microphone slips into it. That can be mounted just about anywhere. It's got some little self-tapping screws. I wouldn't trust those screws to hold in a plastic dashboard or anything. You might want to find something that's really sturdy to connect that to. This right here is the actual programming cable. It's USB with a little flat uh, connector there that goes into the side of the front of the radio. Here we have mounting screws. These are heftier. A couple spare fuses. Okay, and the mounting, the little black ones in here are for mounting the radio to the uh, Or for mounting the radio to the mobile uh, unit here. If you were putting this in a station, you could put this up under a bookshelf, like I do with my mobile, or just have this down on the desk. It'd be good to screw it down so it doesn't slide around on you, but it will, uh, it's really designed to be mounted this way. 
Okay, so that's the inside of the the radio. Gives us a little idea of the unboxing of the radio. And now we can move on to actually installing it and testing it. Well, there you go. That gives us a little bit of an idea of a very nice radio that we'll look forward to testing in upcoming videos. I'll try to be back tomorrow with another uh, video in my uh, uh, national stay-at-home special here so we can all talk about ham radio every day. So what am I, am I going to do now? I'm going to blow my own horn. So please go to decastler.com slash support and look for ways that you can support this channel. See? I tooted my own horn. Until we next meet, 73.